Hey folks, welcome back to the Uncult Vlog. Now, I recently finished watching the six-episode miniseries called The Devil Czar, which is currently showing on Amazon Prime. Um, I would loosely describe the series as uh, Silence of the Lambs meets The Sixth Sense meets Groundhog Day. In The Devil Czar, our protagonist is Lucy, a social worker and single mother who balances her job of counseling assorted abuse victims with a troubled home life. Her son Isaac is a suffer, almost always silent and curiously devoid of uh, any emotion. While Lucy's husband Mark would like dearly to get her back in his life, he is far less enthusiastic about the son and with cruel sarcasm, he refers to the latter as a psychopath in the making. Lucy also has a senile mother who watches television with the power off and talks to people who aren't there. And oh, it appears that Lucy wakes up every night exactly at 3.33 am, which is supposedly the devil's hour. This is evidenced by a bedside clock that glows a ridiculously bright purple. To me, the bigger mystery is how she manages to fall asleep in the first place with that light in her face. On another story thread, Detective Inspector Ravi Dhillan, played by actor Nikesh Patel, whose shtick is retching at crime scenes and listening to the Beach Boys while studying them. Hold on. So anyway, along with his uh, intensely Scottish cop buddy Nick Holness, Ravi is on the trail of a random series of murders and abductions which hint at a diabolical serial killer. Together, they discover that the murderer is in some way related to Lucy and Isaac. These two tracks are frequently interrupted by a series of scenes set at an unspecified time in an interrogation cell, where Bruce, Ravi and Lucy are talking to a rather sinister, murderous-looking character called Gideon, who is played by Peter Capaldi of Doctor Who fame. The overall tone of The Devil's Hour is what I call Netflix dark. This is to say the characters have intense obsessive personalities and dark secrets. The crime scenes are gruesome. If a character smiles, you can be sure that the smile will be wiped out before long. That said, it's not all misanthropic and it does have a sense of humor, which goes some way to make the atmosphere less miserable. It also helps that the actors fit their parts really well. Jessica Rain is empathetic as the single mother protagonist, but special mention must be made of child actor Benjamin Shivers with his beautifully modulated depiction of the almost android-like Isaac. Capaldi and Nikesh Patel also acquit themselves pretty well. Individual episodes have some strong moments, but there are also seemingly random dream logic segments. It is in the final episode that the underlying concept is revealed for which the clues had been strewn before. Without going too far into spoiler territory, this is where the Groundhog Day element dominates in a very far-reaching way. It calls for a significant suspension of disbelief and renders certain characters and subplots less important than they initially seemed. How much that conceit appeals to you is a matter of individual taste. I thought it was decent and they did go for a bold downer ending which is not a return to status quo, so uh, brownie points from me for that. On the whole, I would describe the Devil's are as somewhat cliched and contrived, but it is also nicely polished and frequently effective. Fans of mystery horror dramas might want to check it out and, you know, in the end it's just six hour long episodes, so you don't have much to lose. So that's it from me about the Devil's are and I hope to see you soon on another episode of the Uncult Vlog.